Hello everyone, this is a continuation of our tutorial on creating feathers using Ornatrix for Maya. In the previous tutorial we created a single feather using the propagation operator and uh, including some of the Ornatrix operators to define its shape, to introduce some clumping and some curvature, uh, as well as other effects that uh, you might want on your feather. So in this follow-up tutorial we're going to be looking at putting that feather, or rather a set of feathers, onto a actual character. So in this case we have our bird here, and our bird is completely naked, so it doesn't have the lead feathers here, the main ones, and it also doesn't have the secondary one. So for now, at first we're just going to be concentrating on putting the main feathers, so the long ones. In fact, uh, this sample scene, uh, this starting scene, which is available for free on our website in the samples area, uh, contains a set of feathers that were created for this bird initially. If you go to the channel box layers editor, uh, you can find a couple of uh, layers here, and one of them is hidden. It's called feather cards. If you un unhide it, you can see those meshes that were created. And all of these are just uh, textured mesh planes. You can actually see the alpha transparency here. If you open the outliner, you can find those feather cards here. And as you can see, they're individual feather meshes, which is not ideal. It's kind of a, a nightmare to create those by hand, especially having to place them one by one onto your character. And this being not a real feather kind of makes this approach not very ideal for a detailed hero character feathering. So we're going to be creating a similar type of effect of placing these main feathers onto our character, but we're going to do it completely or, or almost completely procedurally using Ornatrix, and the feathers are going to be very detailed, individual hairs uh, completely created from scratch using the previous and this tutorial. So um, it's going to be procedural, nice looking, and renderable using any popular renderer out there. So let me just hide this back, so uh, just to show you that there are feather on the tail as well. Let me just hide this layer and we can begin our tutorial. So before we move any further, uh, let's take a look at some reference, which is always a good idea to do when you're trying to model and replicate real life. So uh, in this case, the eagle that I googled here has a pretty good shot of the wing that we can take a look at and uh, there are a couple of things we can notice right away. So first of all is there are multiple layers of feathers and they seem to be going on top of each other. Uh, second is that this one layer in particular seems to have the longest feathers and is the most prominent. And third is that these feathers are more or less evenly spaced from one another. So we don't want them to be random, we want them to be pretty uniformly spaced towards each other. Also the feathers at the tips here seem to be a little bit different from the feathers that are closer to the body. And uh, this, is, this only applies to this main one, the secondary and third layers are more or less uh, similar feathers here. So for now, let's just try to replicate this very first layer of feathers and see what it takes to do this. Uh, because once we get this done, getting the secondary and the third layers and so on are pretty much straightforward and is more or less uh, a copy and paste type of job. Uh, so let's go back to our scene. And we want to place the primary feathers somewhere around the very uh, inner edge of the wing here. To do this, I'm gonna go and enter the component mode of my feather mesh, of my sorry, of my eagle mesh, and I'm gonna go select edge. And it's probably a good idea to turn off the soft select first, so I'm going to do that. It's pretty easily done by pressing the B key on your keyboard, and then I'm going to find the exact area where I want my um, my feathers to grow, and I'm going to select the very leftmost part of this range. And I'm gonna just kind of trace it with my mouse so I can select this whole edge ring going along all the way to the tip of the wing. Once I find the other edge on the other side of the wing, I'm gonna press shift to include and then double click to select this whole edge ring over here. Next, I'm going to go into my select menu, convert selection, and I'm going to convert my edge selection into the face component selection. So I'm gonna press to faces just so that we select this whole edge ring as a set of faces. Now I'm gonna go to my Ornatrix menu and add some hairs to this. Initially there is nothing added because the selected faces area is so narrow that there are no hairs placed, no guides placed on it. In fact, there's uh, only one guide. Uh, but this is not a problem because we're gonna be placing our guides manually. So in fact, I'm gonna go back to guide from mesh and I'm gonna reduce the count all the way to zero. We don't need to automatically generate guides. We'll, we'll plant manual ones. Then I'm gonna go into my edit guides operator and I'm gonna enter the root mode. Then I'm gonna press the 
plant guide tool button and inside the tools menu I'm gonna change the length of my placed guides to something like 10 centimeters because 50 centimeters is too long by default I'm gonna close my window here and then I'm just gonna place my guide here so one guide here one guide maybe here one guide here you should not stress too much about the placement or the quantity of the guides because we can always create or delete these guides in the future I'm gonna go to my hair from guides operator turn it back on and now I'm gonna go and change the interpolation mode to barycentric and I'm gonna change uh, the triangulation type to manual inter manual triangulation so right now there are only three hairs generated and this is fine we're only previewing 10% of them if I increase this count you can see that there are more hairs but the problem again is if you look at the reference we have these feathers evenly spaced and we want them to be evenly spaced here as well so if you have watched the previous tutorial about the UV based distribution you can get an idea of how we can accomplish this first I'm gonna change my distribution type to uniform and I'm also going to increase my render count a bit and this is better but if we look this way you can see that uh, we have like patches of hairs generated they're not all generated along the same line and the reason for that is because the UV coordinates are kind of uh, warped along the Y axis along the V axis and they're not exactly straight and we can correct this by doing a couple of steps so first step is we probably want a separate UV channel for our mesh I'm gonna go to UV menu and open the UV set editor Next, I'm going to copy my UV channel one, so we have a separate channel just for the hairs. I'm gonna rename it to uh, hair distribution. Next, I'm gonna go to my hair from guides operator and I'm gonna make sure that we are using the hair distribution channel for our UV set. And the final step is to go and edit this actual UVs. So I'm gonna go to my UV editor, I'm gonna select my eagle and I'm going to enter the component mode again we can go to uh, face mode because we already selected those faces and we'll find exactly where these faces are so the problem is right now that these faces are not in a straight line instead they're kind of bent a little bit and we want to align them along the U axis to be on the same V coordinate to do this I'm gonna go to my UV toolkit tools dialog here and first thing is I want to disconnect these faces to be their own shell so with those faces selected I'm going to go to this cut and saw drop down and I'm just gonna create a UV shell here so I'm pressing the create UV shell and if I move them now you can see that they make up a separate shell and next I'm going to spread those along the U axis so that the, they all have the same V coordinate and to do this I'm going to go to unfold and there is this straighten UVs option here which I'm going to use and now it has straightened this out into one rectangular shape for me I can either use uh, automatic layout or I can scale this manually to be a little bit bigger and I'll just place them somewhere in the beginning of our UV space here so that we can have a quick future access to this so once I've done this if I go back to my viewport you can see that our hairs are now much more evenly spaced and this is exactly what we wanted and what we expect to see if I go back to hair from guides and reduce the count we can kind of spread this out to be approximately the same distance or amount as in our reference image so these are probably a little bit too thin right now I'm gonna go back and turn on my change width operator I'm gonna make sure that we have uh, same thickness throughout our whole feather and we will be replacing these feathers in the future as with actual propagated feathers so right now they're just tendons and they're there to give us some kind of a visual aid of where the feathers will be placed so I'm just gonna increase the width a little bit we do want them to overlap each other so maybe something like this is good uh, if you notice right now as I rotate my camera all of these feathers they're always facing the camera because this is the default setting for hairs we want hairs to be cylindrical whereas feathers are flat so we will go to our furball shape over here which is probably a good time to be renamed to main feathers main wing feathers and I'm gonna go to the viewport display drop down and in here we have a checkbox called camera facing hair we want to turn this off if I turn this off then we are getting the rotations from the hairs themselves which are oriented along the topology of our mesh which happens to be kind of random in places so that's why we get this weird strange random orientations by default so next thing to do is book to go back to edit guides and to start playing around with the shape of our feathers 
I'm gonna make sure that the guides are a little bit thicker because right now it's hard to see them. I'm gonna go back to guide options and increase the guide width to maybe 10. You can probably go to a higher value. If I select guides individually and uh, move them around, you can see that we can actually sculpt and create our feather shape. Uh, so to create, to change the length of it, right now it's constrained. We can go to our guides options here and we can uncheck this preserve strand length option. Let me just get rid of my UV toolkit. Uh, if I do that, I can change the length and I can pretty much have complete complete control over the shape of my guides. Again, uh, the uh, tips of the wings, the guides are their longest and they get shorter progressively the more we get towards the body over bird. So you want to make sure that we approximate the shape. We can stress a little bit more about this later. But the good thing is that we can always, like I said, add or remove guides. And this does not affect the positioning of our final hairs. So we can always go back and adjust our guides as needed. So right now, as I said, the rotations are a little bit wacky. Uh, so what we can do is we can select all of these guides and go back to our root mode. And we can press this rotate strands button here. And if I click and drag on the surface of the mesh, uh, you can see that we can adjust the rotations of uh, the actual hairs. So what, what's happening here is that we are actually rotating the guides. We don't see those rotations, but the rotations of the guides are getting interpolated by hair from guides into the final hair. Um, the rotations can be adjusted individually. So if I just select this one guide, I can just change its rotations and they're going to be interpolated for the other guides. We are all doing it inside the same Edit Guides operator. However, if you want to separate the shape changes from your rotation changes, you can always create a second Edit Guide operator and do it there. But just for simplicity's sake, I'm doing it all in a single operator here. So I'm just gonna adjust my rotations. So the feathers are kind of overlapping themselves and I just wanna make sure that they are going in the right direction. <coughs> and it looks like judging by the reference, this is the correct orientation. So they should be overlapping each other um, this way. So something like this is uh, is okay for now. As a final step in this video, let's just uh, duplicate these changes to the other side of the mesh. This is quite easily done in Ornitrix by adding a symmetry operator. So I'm just going to uh, click this add symmetry operator button in the shelf to duplicate the feathers onto the other side of the mesh. So these hairs are actually grounded on the other side of the mesh now and they can receive surface information and they will deform accordingly if our eagle is animated or if we perform any other actions on it. We can also uncheck this button to get faster updates. So in this case, they're not grounded. They will not deform with the mesh if uh, the other side changes uh, non-symmetrically, but this is okay for the modeling phase. So if I go back to edit guides and I make any other adjustments to my guides, you can see that the changes will remain symmetrical and this pretty much saves us half of the work when creating our feathers. So I'll see you in the next tutorial where we will finesse this a little bit more and we will start converting these placeholders into actual feathers using a feather reference. Thank you for watching.